Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, are you there? Hello. Hello. Oh, man. I hate the fact you guys can see all my wonderful typing errors. <laughs> Jeez. You're awful. Hey, Vlad. Hey, Tommy. Good morning, Doug. Tommy? Hey. There we go. All right, cool. <laughs> hey, Clemens. Clemens, you there? Yes, I am. Yep, you're very, very faint. I'm very faint? Very, very faint. Unless it's me. How about now? Whoa, that's better. Okay. All right, and Ginger. Yes, I'm here, Doug. Hello. Heinz? Yes, I'm back alive. I was going to say, it's been a while. Welcome back. Oh. One day over a beer, I'll give you the comedy of airs with uh, working from at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, uh, TMR. Yes. Hello. Hello. Mr. Baldwin. Good morning. Hello. Let's see. Do, 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 do. There, got everybody. So for those of you who are adventurous, in two days time, Clemens uh, and I are going to be showing our cloud events presentation, or whatever you want to call it, for the, I keep calling it KubeCon China, but it's actually not KubeCon. It's one of the cons in China by the Linux Foundation. Um, if you are so inclined to join, uh, it's, the time zone is more friendly for Europeans. I believe for me, it'll be 3.30 Eastern time in the morning, um, but I, I thought I'd mention that if someone happens to be awake at that ungodly hour, you're welcome to join and listen to the fun. So, uh, Lance, are you there? Hello, I'm here. Hello. And Colin, are you there? Hey, Doug. Hello. And hey, you Doug. Know? Do you oh, have the link to that um, KubeCon session uh, that you have? I could try to dig it out, yeah. All right, Hold thanks. On. Uh, Ambeth, you there? Yeah, as well. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Um, Thomas, you there? I'm here. Good. Hello. Hello. These days, I'll get to spelling your name down to have a look at it over the same times. So, there's no G there. There we go. Okay, I got it. Perfect. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. <clears throat> oh, I know. <laughs> No, no, no. I don't mean your name is bad. I mean my typing is bad. <laughs> oh, it's also painful for me, though. <laughs> I would love to have a shorter last name. Yeah, I can imagine the difficulty there. All right. Remy, hello. Hi. Okay, well, we're waiting to see if I can dig out that URL. Let's see. Does that work? You can, always, you can always put in the notes later too, by the way. It doesn't, we don't need to slow down for this. Yeah. So Doug, I put it in the chat. Oh, there you go. No, Thank great. You. Thank you. It's actually pre-recorded. So it's really just a uh, question and answer session that's going to be the most interesting, I think. Oh, so, so really you could just share the video with us. Actually, I already mentioned that last week, I think, yeah. It's in one of our Google Drive folder thingies. Yeah. And uh, for better or worse, it is the exact same presentation for the China event as well as KubeCon Europe. So watch it once. You don't have to watch it twice. We are efficient. I 
one more minute that I get started. Hey, Jim, welcome back. Hello, thank you. All right. And Hankui, Hankui, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering your name. Oh, he has no microphone yet, so I can't say anyway. Never mind. All right, three after. We'll sync back up later. Let's see if I'm missing anybody. <clears throat> All right, let's get started. Um, community time. Anything from the community if you want to bring up? All right, moving forward. No SDK call this week. Uh, we do have an agenda for next week, though, so feel free to take a look at that and comment on it if you have anything to say to that. I think Grant added a whole bunch of items there. Um, workflow, Timur, anything you want to bring the group up to speed on? Um, not much. Uh, Doug and I recorded the KubeCon video f with the uh, working group update on cloud events and uh, serverless workflow specification. And uh, the only other thing that happened is we are looking at uh, some design proposals for a logo change for the specification for serverless workflow. That's it. Any questions for anybody or from anybody? All right. Before we jump into PRs, is there anything I forgot that we should talk about for the agenda before we do PRs? All right. In that case, oops, I think I already had this one. Um, unfortunately, I don't see Scott. Um, now, originally, he did have a change in this one. Um, this was just he was going through the spec. Actually, a couple of different. Yeah, this is just the discovery spec. He was just going through the discovery spec, you know, a couple of typos. He did, as of yesterday, actually had a slight wording change in there, but he dropped that or had a potentially non typo type change in there. He dropped that. So now it is just a technically just typos in here. I think these are all mindless. Otherwise, I would have approved it if he had, didn't have another other change, but he did. Um, any questions on this one? Like I said, I think it's just typos more than anything else, like subscription URL is probably the biggest one that I goofed on. Okay, any objection to approving this one? Cool, like easy ones. All right, use case. I think this is Klaus's, but unfortunately he is not here. I think he just wanted to add some additional text in here talking about intermediaries and producers. I'll give you folks a chance, just a split second to read this one, um, in case people haven't had a chance to. And keep on, this is just for the primer for discovery, not the spec. Okay. Anybody have any comments, questions on this change to the discovery primer? Any objections to making the changes? All right, cool. Another easy one. Thank you. And as with anything, we can change it later. These are not set in stone. Um, Christoph. I don't see him on the call. I believe this was um, in response to an issue that Grant opened where there was some confusion around whether batching is a mode versus something else. <laughs> um, and so this was his attempt at trying to fix the wording. Let's see if I can get the key changes here. So I think there are two main changes he had. One is this section right here. I'll give you folks a chance to read that in case you haven't yet. And then I believe, uh, let's ignore this one just for a sec. I think this is the other big chunk of text he added down here. I'll give you a second to read that. Okay, and I got you, Scott, thank you. Um, the other little bit is he added this sentence in here and uh, a couple of people thought there's, wasn't necessary to add that text, but thought, I want to read that a little bit right here. Okay, and with that, let's go ahead and open it up for comments, questions, anything? Comments, you're coming off mute. Yeah, I, I find the, uh, the so I'm and generally agreeing with what's written here. The only thing I find um, a little odd is this is embedded in an envelope thing. 
Where is that down here? Uh, yeah, well, protocol bindings typically use, no, no, the 139. Oh, yes, okay. Well, protocol bindings typically use binary mode messages directly on the wire, structure mode messages are often embedded in the envelope. That's that's a little cumbersome in terms of wording. I also, I'm not sure whether, you know, if you have a structured mode message in JSON and that's a JSON object, I'm not sure whether the JSON object counts as an envelope. So I believe two of the people commented that they would actually prefer to drop these two lines and there is yeah. nothing normative in there. It's not like you might be in favor of dropping it as well. Is that true? Yeah, I, I, yeah, because they, they, I don't think they add something other than potential confusion, but the rest is good. Okay. Anybody else have any comments on any of it? Okay. I think what I'm hearing is maybe accept the PR, but ask him to drop these two lines. Is that what I'm hearing from people? That, that would be good so that we can make progress on this one. Anybody want to comment on that suggestion? I'm in agreement. Okay, thank you, Lance. Me Anybody too. else want to chime in? Sounds good to me. Okay, thank you, John. Okay, anybody object to that direction? Okay, I will double check with Christoph, and if he's okay with it, then we can merge it. If he wants to push back on dropping that text, then we can have more discussions. Sound fair? Approved without. Thank you, everybody. Now, on to one that's a little meatier. All right, back to ID discussion. Um, now, I'm not going to try to speak for Klaus because he's on vacation. However, I will say that in a private Slack message, and you might have to trust me on this, <laughs> he did say that he understood it a little better because he was looking at a previous specification that he and I both worked on called the service binding spec, or I'm sorry, open source broker API which uh, I think has a similar concept in there. And so he didn't necessarily come right out and say, Doug, you're right, this is wonderful. He did at least say he understands better why it's needed. So I'm not saying that he's endorsing this yet. He's got to, he can speak for himself, but I do want to put that out there. So I did go through and make some changes here based upon last week's conversation. Um, in particular, I tried to make it clear that um, it is unique, um, but so is name. Um, name is unique for a slightly different purpose. It's more human readable. It's only unique within the scope of this discovery endpoint, whereas this one is globally unique. Um, so that, for example, if you want say, the same one to appear in different discovery endpoints, you can be guaranteed that the, the ID is the same across them. Um, let's see what else I put in here. Um, oh, I said typically it is uh, defined by the discovery endpoint itself or the <clears throat> one of the components behind there. Uh, I didn't want to make it a hard requirement that that's true because I want to be able to make sure that people can do some sort of import type of action where obviously then it's being provided to the discovery endpoint. I thought that was a, an important use case. Um, talk a little bit about why it's meant, why it's there at all so that the clients can have some consistency in terms of knowing what this entity is, even if all the metadata, including the name changes, be sure it's the same one. Um, and that's a think about it in terms of bulk of changes from this section. The other thing I did change, I know this might be controversial, is I did make the URL of the resource, <coughs> excuse me, use the ID rather than a name, um, mainly because I wanted a static URL. If the URL for this resource uses the name and the name changes, then every single reference to this resource is now going to be broken. Excuse me. And I didn't want to get into a really weird race condition where the server changes, but then how do you make sure all the clients get updated? Does the server have to support both the old and new versions of the URL over time? It just seemed easier if we made it uh, the static URL be the, the uh, UID itself. Now, that's not to say if we wanted to support both the name and ID, um, that's possible. I just got a little bit worried there because what if someone chooses to use a UID as their name? As weird as that may sound, it is technically possible. So those are the kind of things we need to think about. Anyway, that's kind of where I left things. Um, open for discussion. I think John, you cut off mute there for a sec. Did you still want to say something? 
yeah, I was going to ask what Christoph thought about the, the, the name versus ID uh, thing um, when you talked with him. But uh, my, I guess my, my, my bigger concern is the, the question of how, how is this basically, what's the mental model of how people are going to use this in, in, your, in your mind, right? Are they like, because if you're going to use a UUID, okay, well, how do I, how do I find out what that UUID is so that I can go look it up? Right. So I forgot. I did make another change. So down here in the API section, um, so down here in the API section, I did say, okay, I'm going to change from name to ID, but of course that stinks from a usability perspective, right? So I made it a little bit clearer that down here, you can search for it by name. I thought matching wasn't very descriptive, right? Because you don't know what you're matching on. So I thought, okay, let's make it a little clearer. And I thought, okay, you could put in the name there. So here you can find things by the human readable name if you want. It's just, instead of a slash, it's a question mark, basically, is what I'm trying to say there. Right, so the, so the technical thing there. So, so then is, is your model basically sort of akin to DNS, right? I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a very generic label uh, to use a different term. Uh, to go look something up, and then what I get back is a, a, I guess in your term, a static URL for the lifetime of that service in that discovery endpoint. Yes, I believe that is one fair way to think of it, yes. Because, and I even mentioned this in one of the comments above, right? Once, once someone discovers a service, it's very possible that they, wanna, they may want to cache a reference to that service someplace, right? So they're going to stick something inside their own data store or something like that. And whether they store the full set of metadata or just a URL to it is obviously up to them. But at a bare minimum, they're probably going to store the URL to it, right? And it terrifies me that that URL may change because someone fat fingered the name and needs to rename it. And okay, so then everybody's pointing to is broken. Yep. So then the, the the next meta level up is okay. So now that service does actually change, right? Yes. 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 So then at the top level, I'm going to try and connect to that static URL that you've created. Yep. That's going to fail, right? And then. I have a loop that just goes back to doing a new search for a new name or the same, the same name, but doing a new search to get a new static URL to the new service. If yes, if, if that is what you want to do, because the, even though it vanished, yes. Now that's not to say, obviously, if someone wants to store in their data store, a URL that has the query parameter thing, right? So the slash services question mark name equals foo they're welcome to store that as well. And that way they'll, you know, they'll discover even faster that it's gone. You know, the URL they store is up to them. But yes, if, if they're going to store the UID, then yeah, they'll get a 404 and then they have to go refine it and figure out what happened and try to resolve it themselves. And I should also mention, I can't remember who it was. It may actually have been you, John, last week. Somebody mentioned, well, what happens if there's another version of the service? And I actually do want it to be represented as a completely different service. It just happens to be mentally linked because it's version one versus version two kind of thing. Um, I, I, and here I tried to talk about how whether they use a new ID for that or they've replaced the existing one is an implementation choice. I don't think we as authors of the specification can dictate, nope, version one and version two must be completely different services versus, nope, same service and you're just killing off the old one and you reusing the same ID. I think that's up to the service provider or discovery endpoint or somebody on that back end to make that decision. I don't think that's up for us to decide from a spec level. Got it. Any other questions? Now, Thomas, I want to pick on you since you were on the call. You said you did not like having the name and I'm sorry, you didn't like having the UUID in the name. Did my comment here address your concern about that? I think that was you, Thomas, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'm still on mute, sorry. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work with the space bar though. Um, I, I, I see where you're coming from and, and what's your intention. Nevertheless, I, I really don't like having this UUID in the URL. 
it, it just uh, it doesn't look like nice for me <laughs> i know it, and, is it a huge is it a huge concern though in the sense that you know you could drop to this form if you really wanted to right so you, you do get almost the same mm -hmm. thing with just five extra characters true granted if the name isn't unique or if the search term isn't unique right if you just search for foo and you have foo service a and foo service b you'll get both so that that is a bit of a problem so yeah I don't know. Anybody want to have any comments? I'm not going to push for a vote on this today because I still think people need to think about it. it it's obviously a, a touchy subject for people, but I'd, I'd like to try to at least gather your comments and feedback if I need to make changes. It, 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 for, I'm trying to figure out how to interpret silence. You guys know I love silence. Um, does silence mean it's generally the right direction? People don't care? Or how, do, how do people? Thank you. Don't make, uh, I want to avoid picking up people, but I will. On my side, I, I'm still uh, like not convinced by the idea, even if I understand the reason. I'm still, uh, I have to think more. Okay. Okay. Let me pick on Jim because you had the, the pleasure of not being here for several weeks. Oh. Jim, do you have a take on this one? I. If this is just the ID for a thing, why do we care? It's just a string, isn't it? It so is it just a be, string. Yeah, right, so. it could be a UID, a GUID, or, or some random stuff that I make up. It's just a unique resource ID. Well, actually, no, I take that back. It is not just a random string. I do require it to be a GUID or a UID. Now, we could okay. loosen that, but right. it is not meant to be human readable, and it is right. immutable. So if that's the resource ID, then I, I'm not quite sure then it would be normal to put that in a URI string when you're searching for that resource, wouldn't it? If you're oh. getting, if that's what the conversation is about, yeah? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you've drunk the Kool-Aid, that's good. Yeah, I, I <laughs> drank that. <laughs> okay, anybody else want to chime in? Otherwise we'll, we'll move on and we'll revisit it next week. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, please, if you have any comments, um, in particular ones that would make you want to vote no, please raise them in the issue itself so I can, or PR itself, so I can try to address them. Otherwise, we'll see if we can wrap it up next week. Um, let's see, I can't remember who this one was from. Remy, oh, I forgot this was you. Okay, yeah, this one was just opened yesterday, so we can't vote on this today. However, Remy, you want to briefly introduce this one so people can be thinking about it? Uh, yeah, just by um, talking about the discovery service, I remember like there was a requirement of uh, filtering the events and uh, service based on your permissions. But uh, if the discovery service is decoupled from the service itself, it might not have the permission scheme uh, embedded. So you cannot know what do you have access to. So it might want to list uh, all the events from the service and cannot comply with that requirement. So we just loosen it uh, with like talking with we'll Google. We just think it was better to make it optional. Okay. Any questions on that? Does everybody understand why he wants to loosen it? Does it seem reasonable? Okay, I'm not hearing any objection. We'll vote on that one next week. So please, when you get a chance to review that one. And that is technically it. Um, this PR, um, I know Lance, you had a few comments in there. <clears throat> I don't think they were controversial necessarily, but I know Slinky is on vacation today, so we didn't get a chance to make those changes. So we're gonna have to wait on that one. But of the other PRs here, um, Actually, I guess I'm still reworking the pagination one. Um, I'm still trying to absorb people's feedback from that one. So hopefully that, I'll get that one on next week, hopefully. I think these last three might be from Slinky if he's not here. Or actually, no, I'm sorry, Jim, your protobuf one. Did you, what's the status of that one? Is it still sort of in the works? If you had to lay money, which way would you swing? I, I'm, I'm betting no, no movement, I'm afraid, at the moment. 
<laughs> okay. Is there anything you need from us to help you make progress or is it just a matter of just working through the, the comments and going back and forth with people? No, it's, I think it's just me. I think the last, uh, the last comment on it was really uh, that I've seen, uh, and there may be more I have to say, was more around um, being more uh, explicit in examples of how we might translate between different um, event formats. Um, so, you know, bringing in a structured JSON event, for instance, and sending out a struct, you know, the same event, but now structured as, as Proto. Um, so that, that was an ask. I think, um, I think I know how to address that. I just haven't got around to it, I'm afraid. Yeah. All right. Um, before we leave this section of PRs, um, or I guess any issues too, if somebody opened an issue they want to raise, is there anything people want to bring up that's not on the list or I forgot to bring up? Okay. In that case, the next topic is discovery interop. Um, I know personally, I still haven't had a chance to do any coding yet. Uh, anybody else want to chime in in terms of their status or opinions on their coding efforts? Uh, for me, I'm waiting to settle down the, the discovery <laughs> spec to make sure I implement uh, the latest spec based on our discussion. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to speak up? Okay. In that case, before we think about wrapping this up, I do have another question. Um, Klaus, I'm not Klaus, uh, Clemens. Um, on your schema registry thingy, is there anything you want to do with that or are you okay with us just sort of waiting till people review it and comment on it? Um, what do you have in mind? I don't know. I just, I just feel a little bit bad that we're focusing heavily on the okay. schema stuff. Um, I don't feel bad about the subscription API because I feel like we'll get to that once we finish discovery since it's a natural progression. Yeah. But on, this, on the schema stuff, I want to make sure that you didn't feel like we were neglecting it or something. So I just want to make no. sure it wasn't something you wanted to do. No, no I'm not worried. I think, I think all those things hang together in, in a way. And uh, if we get those, if we get the discovery, if we give discovery love now, then, um, and then look at this registry, that's fine. I think the folks who were thinking about implementing schema registry were already uh, reviewing it. I don't know how, how far anybody has progressed in, in terms of uh, uh, implementation, but given that it's July coming up in August and we're still having you know, people on vacation, etc., I'm not, I don't feel any rush right now. Okay, cool. Just wanted to double check. Okay. Yeah. Um, in that case, before I go back into final attendance, the attendee list, are there any other topics we want to bring up? All right. In that case, very short call today. Um, Manuel, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. All right. Ankui or Ankui? Ankui? Maybe it's something for Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, Brian Young. First, Brian is here. Okay. What about Brian number two, Brian Zerman? Yes. Hello. Hello. And what company are you with, by the way, if you want to be associated with the company? Yes, of course. So um, I'm, uh, I'm with Google. Oh. And I, I uh, just joined the project as a product manager for um, uh, the eventing side of things. So happy to uh, happy to be sitting on the meetings and and uh, joining the initiatives. Cool. Well, thank you for joining. We have two Brian's from Google now. That's exciting. <laughs> two Brian's from Google on the same team. So it's quite confusing. We'll have to use our last names wherever possible. <laughs> and you both spell Brian the same way too. It's not even like one of you has an I and the other has Y. That's interesting. That's true. Yeah. All right, uh, Christian, are you there? Hey, good morning. Good morning. All right, did I miss anybody? Oh, I'm sorry, there was somebody else. Uh, Sanjay, sorry. I'm here. Yes, and I'm good sorry, I, I apologize. Is this your first time on the call? This is my second time. Second time, okay, then I already got you. Never mind. Okay, cool, thank you. All right, did I miss anybody for attendance? All right, in that case, I believe we are done. Thank you, everybody, and please. If you get a chance, look over the uh, outstanding PRs and comment if you can. Um, otherwise, we'll talk again next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Have a great Thank day. You. Bye. 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 Bye.